heralded during the Song dynasty, the Ding kilns were celebrated as one of the five great kilns producing porcelain in ancient China. The site of the kilns was found in present-day Qiyang County, Hebei province. At the time of the Song dynasty, Qiyang County was within the Dingzhou region, hence the name Ding kilns. The excavated artifacts found at the site reveal the history of the kilns. White porcelain was produced in Dingzhou as early as the Tang dynasty, by the Five Dynasties period, the Ding kiln business was already booming. After the Northern Song dynasty, Ding wares were famous for their off-white glazes and exquisite decoration. Porcelain kilns in other areas all strived to imitate Ding porcelain, which became the golden standard of white porcelain in China. Aside from white porcelain, the Ding wares also produced black, crimson and green glazed porcelains. The variety of glaze colors and production technology was truly astounding for its time. Early Ding porcelain had a single color and little to no decoration, however by the late Northern Song dynasty there were exquisite patterns on porcelain wares, which were engraved, etched, or imprinted. The patterns were precisely laid out, with a clear sense of sections and layers, lines were clean and organized into loose and dense areas. Popular motifs included fish, animals, birds, flowers and children at play. Of the floral motifs, peonies, lotuses and pomegranates were the most common. Engraved floral decoration was the primary ornamentation in early song porcelain. Once the technique caught on, it was combined with comb-etched images as a secondary form of decoration. Engravings were usually done with bamboo chips and knives, while comb etchings were made with a comb tool that produced regular patterns on the body. The combined result was commonly referred to as bamboo outlines with brushed patterns, with very tidy and natural looking lines. Imprinted patterns on Ding porcelain first appeared in the mid-Northern Song dynasty and matured late in the dynasty. The pattern decoration was often placed on the insides of plates and bowls. Making imprinted patterns required a mold with engraved patterns, which was pressed to the partially dried surface of the clay body. Most often, the imprinted image had added thickness to create a very special effect of depth when light strikes the object. The motifs and designs were typically borrowed from silk tapestry, as well as gold and silverware produced in the Dingzhou area. This had a notable influence on imprinted design of later generations. The Song dynasty Ding kilns produced vessels such as bowls, dishes, jars, cups, cases, vases and pots all for daily use. One of the most important contributions of the Ding potters was the invention of the inverted firing method. The inherent problem of warping when firing the thin Ding bowls and plates in upright position prompted the potters to look for a solution. The potters devised the method of firing the vessels upside down. To do so, it is necessary to scrape away the glaze on the rim so that they do not stick to the saga. This method enabled the spreading of the weight of the vessels over a wider area and solved the problem of warp vessels. On the downside, due to a lack of glaze at the mouth of these vessels, the edges felt quite dry and dull. An added advantage is that it increases production volume. The steps in the saga enabled more pieces to be placed as compared to the method of stacking with the wares facing upward. An interesting change to the foot ring of the bowls and plates also took place subsequently. During the Jin period, many of the foot rings of the bowls and plates became shorter or even totally non-existent. This further increased the stacking space, and increased production volume. Among the five great kilns of the Song dynasty, Ding kilns are the only ones to produce white porcelain, which made them famous in their time. For a period, the wares were offered as tribute to the imperial families, but this practice was stopped for an unknown reason. The official reason was that the vessels lacked glaze at their mouths. However, dingware often had extensive gold, silver and copper trimming around the unglazed rim. Some people speculate that the real reason for the discontinued use of dingware by the imperial family was a change in fashion preferences at the time. The white of the ding porcelain was opaque and bland. In order to counter such drawbacks, the wares were decorated with imprinted or engraved patterns. Compared to the porcelain of the Ko Yao, Guan, Ru and Jun wares, Ding ware contained more man-made ornamentation, which fell short of the ideal of subtle natural beauty in the Song period. For this reason, Ding ware did not quite capture the imagination of the literati class, and may have even been considered somewhat vulgar in taste and style. If you enjoy these videos, then subscribe, as new videos are added daily. Thank you. 
This video is brought to you by Irv Graham's Chinese Antiques. Do you possess a piece of Chinese porcelain or a Chinese work of art that you would like to know more about? It makes sense to get an accurate valuation for a number of reasons, such as 1. You want advice before buying or selling an item. 2. Your insurance company requires an accurate valuation. 3. A valuation is required for tax or inheritance purposes. 4. You simply just wish to know more about your item's history etc. Whatever your reasons, our valuation service will answer the following important questions on your behalf. How old is your item? Is your item imperial? Where was your item made? How much are similar items selling for at auction? You have heard the old saying you get what you pay for. Well, that is certainly the case here. There are other Chinese antique valuation and authentication services charging less than the service offered by Irv Graham. But Chinese antiques being what they are, it's imperative a good valuer has a sharp eye, hands-on experience along with in-depth knowledge and up-to-date research material. Irv Graham will not undertake any valuation unless he is 100% sure he can deliver to each customer a valuation report that is guaranteed accurate and to which he will personally stand by. It is imperative when looking at Chinese works of art that a correct appraisal is conducted, as incorrect information can be very, very costly to you the customer. Visit chineseantiques.co.uk to start your appraisal and valuation service online. Thank you.